Hey guys, this is Matt Core from controlpaint.com. And I think one of the most important things when you start designing your workspace is just knowing what we don't need. So let's go through a number of what I'm gonna call unused palettes. They're useful for somebody, sure, but not for me. I'm a digital painter, so I need only very specific tools. So in the window menu, let's just start from the top. Number one, 3D. You do not need this panel. I'm just gonna leave it at that. If you want to do 3D stuff, there's better software for it. So we'll check that one off the list. Adjustments is an interesting one. I actually love adjustment layers. The question is, is the adjustments panel necessary? And really all it is is a bunch of little buttons that represent this menu here. The little black and white circle, which adds adjustment layers. So it's just a matter of preference. For me, I don't use them enough to rationalize having this on screen all the time but some people do. So for me, adjustments is on the list. For you, it might not be. Next up, we're gonna talk about a very borderline panel. Channels are something I use very infrequently, but the really nice thing is they can live here as a tab under the layers palette, so there's not a lot of screen real estate lost. So I'll give them a temporary status. I'll use them sometimes, but they're not generally visible. Next on the list is character but this is actually gonna pull up a number of different panels. So I'm gonna talk about them all at the same time. Here we have character, paragraph, paragraph styles, character styles, and glyphs. If you work with text much, you probably know about these. Well, the fact is when I'm digital painting, I don't do much text. These are all very related. So if I need one, I probably need them all, but most of the time I don't need any of them. So we'll put them on the list. Next up, we have clone source. This is an interesting one. Some people will paint with the clone brush religiously. And if you've never seen it before, what it allows you to do is to select part of your painting as the source and then to use that part of the painting elsewhere. So instead of selecting a color with the eyedropper, you're actually selecting an area of the image and sort of pushing it around. So for me, I don't really find this all that useful, so I'm not gonna put it on my list. All right, moving on down, we have color. In my opinion, this is not all that necessary. The way I like to use color is to just pull it up with a keyboard shortcut, change it when I need it, and then I close it and I don't need it most of the time. So even though color is very important for a digital painter, for my personal workflow, it's not something I need on screen constantly. So we'll check that one off the list. History is an interesting one. I always see people with this history window taking up, you know, most of the right side of their screen, but I don't know what it's used for. I mean, I do, I know that I can click on it and it'll go back to a previous uh, phase in my painting. Maybe for a photographer, if you're doing retouching, you wouldn't have as many steps, but we fill this thing so fast. I find the history palette to be largely useless. So for me, it's on the list as well. Info is another one of those that I think is really more aimed at graphic designers and photographers. In short, what it does is you put down little points on the image and then they will tell you information about them. So they'll tell you the RGB color, you can have the luminosity, really whatever you want. For digital painting, I find it to be not very useful. So we'll put that on the list as well. Okay, I'm gonna to switch to a different document here for layer comps. What they do is they just store a combination of these little eyeballs, the position of layers, and essentially anything you can toggle. And then it saves that as a sort of freeze frame. So I'm not going back and forth in history, I'm just toggling through different states of the layer palette. So this would be good if you wanted to give a bunch of different color options for something or to make a presentation. Nice to know it's there, but from general digital painting, it's also on the list. All right, moving our way down. Measurement log, libraries. These are features that, in my opinion, are all aimed at graphic designers. So you could use libraries theoretically if you had assets that you were using in every painting, maybe logos or symbols or something. For me, I don't see the use for digital painters, not really. Same with measurement log, timeline. These just aren't for us, so they're on the list. Modifier keys, this is a new one. I think this one's kind of funny. It's clearly aimed at tablet users. So if you don't have a keyboard, you would just touch these with your finger. So clearly not for me because I'm working on a desktop, 
but I suppose if you were doing tablet painting, that would be nice. For me, it's on the list. Now, the Navigator is another interesting one. I used to swear by the Navigator. I would, you know, have it up there as a little quick thumbnail view of my image. And in that regard, it's nice. It allows you to just see the image small to see if it's working in general. Over time, though, I found I don't actually use it all that much. I certainly don't pan around the image by moving this little red square anymore. I just use the hand tool. So for you, it might be necessary. For me, the Navigator is a bit of a waste of space. So I'm going to put it on the list as well. All right, I'm going to open styles and swatches at the same time, because in my opinion, they are equally unnecessary. Styles, this would be fine if you're doing um, user interface design layouts or website layouts. They're really useful to have sort of preset styles that you're reusing over and over. Swatches, same deal. If you had colors that you are always using and you want a consistency across your documents, these would be nice. So for me, Swatches and styles are both on the list. All right, so that is a long list. It's good to know what they do and it's good to try them out, but what we're doing is we're trying to tailor that perfect fit for our painting workflow. And this long list, that's stuff we don't need in there. So in the videos to come, we're gonna talk more about the panels and palettes that I do use every day in my paintings, but I really can't overstate the value of knowing what you don't need. It's a great start. Thanks for coming to the site, guys.